Russian soldiers are being trained to fly drones in Syria by instructors from Iran and Hezbollah. In early April, Ukraine attacked with drones a plant in the Alabuga Special Economic Zone in the Yelabuga region of the Republic of Tatarstan, where drones are produced. This marked a new stage in the drone war. The target was a high-tech college and manufacturing complex on the Russian steppes, where Moscow is seeking to increase weapons production. The said plant aims to produce 6,000 Shahed attack drones per year, writes the Wall Street Journal. Journalists emphasize that drones are playing an increasingly important role in current conflicts. Russia has carried out dozens of attacks using Iranian Shahed drones. Their low cost, compared to the expensive missiles Ukraine uses, means air defense units sometimes resort to machine guns to shoot them down. Shortly after the Russian invasion in February 2022, Ukraine successfully deployed Turkish Bayraktar TB2 drones. In response, Moscow turned to Iran for access to its drones. Since then, the Russian Federation has launched more than 4,000 Shahed attack drones. While the first models came directly from Iran, the latest strikes were carried out with devices made entirely in Russia. Military experts say, since then, Moscow has used key alliances to build up its defense capabilities. In early April, senior Biden administration officials said China had provided Russia with optics, microelectronics, and other dual-use materials that could be used in drones. In September, Ukraine said Russia was receiving engines for its Shahed attack drones from China, naming the supplier as a company called Beijing Micropilot UAV Flight Control Systems. But also a key factor is the deepening of Russia's ties with Iran and a large number of African states. The Iranian drone production facility, located in several hangars in the Alabuga Special Economic Zone on a tributary of the Volga, demonstrates how different elements come together. Russian businessmen struck an agreement to build a drone factory in late 2022 when they flew to Tehran with a lucrative offer $1.7 billion, partially paid for in gold bullion. Unusual conditions confirmed by the Wall Street Journal, citing U.S. security officials. According to a contract between Russian plant managers and their Iranian partners, which was leaked to the Prana network and independently confirmed by two British government advisors, the Alabuga plant is to produce 6,000 Shahed attack drones a year, in addition to surveillance drones. According to Ukrainian military intelligence, Russian soldiers are already being trained to fly drones in Syria by instructors from both the Revolutionary Guard and the Iranian-backed militant group Hezbollah. According to the authors, to expand production of drones, Russia needs skilled workers to assemble them. Baltic states and Poland may deploy troops to Ukraine if Russia succeeds. The Baltic states and Poland do not rule out sending their troops to Ukraine if Russia succeeds on the battlefield, reports German media The Spiegel. According to Spiegel, Baltic MPs warned representatives of the German government about the consequences of Berlin's policy towards the Ukraine war on the sidelines of the Lennart Meri Conference on Foreign and Security Policy, which took place in the Estonian capital last week. Germany refuses to provide the Ukrainian army with long-range weapons and prohibits the Ukrainian armed forces from striking Russian territory with Western weapons. They argue that if the Russians manage to make a strategic breakthrough in eastern Ukraine because the West is only half-heartedly helping Kyiv, the situation could escalate dramatically. In that case, the Baltic states and Poland would not wait for Russian troops to deploy on their borders. Baltic politicians warned but would send troops to Ukraine themselves. And it was clear that this would mean NATO would become a party to the war, the article says. As Spiegel explains, this is exactly the scenario that German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and US President Joe Biden fear. Those who want to limit the war through excessive restraint actually risk getting it out of control, the media says. French President Emmanuel Macron was the first to voice the possibility of sending Western troops to Ukraine. But Macron's idea was supported only by the Baltic states and Poland, while the rest of NATO countries, including Germany, criticized the French leader's statement. Recently, the New York Times reported that NATO was discussing the possibility of sending military instructors to Ukraine to train soldiers. 
Currently, NATO troops are training Ukrainian soldiers abroad. President Volodymyr Zelensky also voiced the idea of deploying NATO instructors to Ukraine. He explained that this could speed up the training of the Ukrainian military as they would not have to be sent to Poland, Germany or Britain.